Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for dropping by. Now, one question that I often get is, what is a Bartonoff mask and how do you use one? Well, this is a Bartonoff mask and basically it's for focusing. Now, this one here has been very kindly sent to me by SV Boney. Uh, and as you know, SV Boney, I'm a big fan of SV Boney products. Uh, I haven't come across really a bad product of theirs. And the great thing about SV Boney is they have very reasonable prices um, uh, compared to a, a lot of their competitors. And the, like I say, the products are always well made. And uh, something as simple as this focus mask, again, it's a lovely, well made uh, piece of equipment that's going to last you years if you look after it. Now, this particular one is all aluminium. I believe the metal that it's made, that this part around the ring here, this red part, is aluminium. Uh, again, which is just going to last you uh, for years, really, looked after. And it's finished in this lovely uh, red coating. I do like it, actually. A lot of SV Boney products are having this, like, uh, metallic uh, red um, paintwork or finish on their products. I do, I, I do like it. Now, there's not a real lot to say about this. I mean, that's basically it. Oh, and then, of course, there's the main mesh part. Now, this is plastic, uh, but it's not a brittle pl plastic, you know. It's not one of those sort of plastics that you think is going to break easily. So, like I say, I think that's going to be pretty hard wearing as well. But, of course, time will tell about that. Now, this uh, mask by SV Boney, the way they've designed this one is to use it a bit like a cap on a, on a, on a jar, if you like, like a lid. It's to just fit over the end of the telescope but there is a little bit of caution i want you to be aware of if you are going to order one of these and that is to really make sure you get the correct size and um, one thing uh, i have noticed especially this one even though this is 160 millimeters uh, in diameter it, it, I can say it fits over the outside of your telescope. Well, this is, as you can see, my spider on this telescope is it, it's an external attachment. Uh, so this makes the uh, outside of this telescope 170. So you do have a little bit of a problem where it's virtually exactly the same identical size. But don't worry, it's not a problem at all and it's an easy fix. And if you do order one and it's just a little bit too small and won't actually fit over the, uh, the end of the telescope, you can simply do this with the magic of video, with video editing. <laughs> now, all I've done here is just simply sellotaped, that's all it is, just, just ordinary clear t uh, tape, two little prongs. Now, what, it, what you use for those is entirely up to you. I've just used two cotton bud uh, stems or Q-tips, depending on what side of the pond you're from. Uh, just, that's all you need. And as you can see now, you just put them at like uh, 10 to 2, if you like, and that will just now just fit onto your telescope like that and that's that's all it needs because you're not going to be wafting this your telescope around like a fishing rod or anything that's on there and anyway as you can see it's pretty stable uh, and secure on there so but it's just something to take into consideration if you do order one of these and it is a little bit too small uh, don't worry about it just do that simple mod to it and uh, as you can see it works fine now these masks will work on all types of telescopes, so, you know, um, reflectors, refractors, uh, Cassegrains, Max, anything, you, they, they'll work, uh, so don't worry about that. So, um, that's about all for the mask itself, for what we can say. Now, let's get on to how you use one of these things. Now, the Bartonoff mask, which I should have said right at the start of the video, I don't know if I did, is for focus and it's to give you good precise focus now this isn't as as important for visual astronomy but it's absolutely essential for any kind of astrophotography believe me there's been a many of a night's worth of astrophotography got deleted and trashed purely because the telescope was just a little bit out of focus and that's all it takes folks to just totally ruin your images so one of these if you're doing any kind of astrophotography is essential and not just really for astrophotography also for visual because even now after all the years i've been looking through telescopes if for instance you're looking at the planets um, for an example i'm over 
often saying to myself, am I in precise focus? Is that as best I can get? Because we all want the best we can get out of whatever telescope we're using. And if it's out a little bit of focus, you know, you're not getting the best out of your telescope. And uh, it can be even, you know, can be even more confusing or, or a little bit hard to see if you're in focus if the atmosphere is a little bit unstable. So it's very rare we do get them perfectly still nights where uh, you don't get any wobble at all atmospheric disturbance. And that can also play with, you know, am I or aren't I in focus? Well, this is where one of these comes into play. Now, However you want to fit it, whether it's the prong method like this or fit it over, you don't do that just yet. The first thing to do is go out on a nice clear night and to pick out a very bright star. Now, this is going to vary from season to season. Uh, for instance, in the summer, you could use Vega in Lyra. In the winter, maybe Sirius or something like that, the dog star, a very bright, uh, beautiful star. And uh, the brighter, the better, really and get that star in the center of your field of view. Now, whether you're using uh, uh, an eyepiece or a camera, it doesn't matter. This will work with an astro camera and also with your eyepiece. Um, I would recommend a, a low to medium eyepiece if you are using an eyepiece. So get that star in the center of the field of view of your telescope and then pop on your mask. Now, when, whether you're using a camera or an eyepiece, the, 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 the view you're going to see is exactly the same when you look through the, uh, when you look through the eyepiece or the camera. And uh, you're going to see this with the mask in place. Now, let me just explain what you're looking at here. Now, that, that's not graphics. This is actually what you will see. This is the, because of the way the, the mask is cut, these little cuts, these fancy cuts on the front of the mask, will actually um, dis disperse the, the, the light for the starlight, if you like, and you get these like uh, refraction spikes coming out um, of, um, because of the mask. Now, the, the center point is the star. So that's what you're looking at here. And then the star, and because like I say, the cutouts is gonna um, just spread out the light from the star into this like sort of uh, cross shape, if you like. Now, this image here that you're looking at, this is in focus. This is a, a telescope that's in focus. And this is what you want when you, when you, uh, you, you know, you, you're tweaking the focus. This is the image you want to see through the eyepiece or the camera. And as you can see, all the lines are central. You've got like that big cross and then that's the center line goes right through the center of that cross. Now, if the telescope was, was out of focus, you're going to see this. And as you can see, that center line now is way off center. And you would just simply tweak, you, you either rack your focuser in or out, and that would move these uh, refraction lines until they were all kind of, uh, you know, uh, centralized, if you like. And uh, so, you, so you get th this image here. And if we compare the two, you can see the difference. Um, and that's it, that's it's as simple as that. And once everything's all equal and you've got that line straight down the center, you are in precise focus. And remember, once you've done that, unless you're changing eyepieces, of course, you don't have to touch the focuser for the rest of the evening uh, because, you know, um, it's infinite focus, if you like, on a telescope. So whatever you point out to at the night sky now is, you know, and could be uh, confident that you're in good focus. And that's the best your telescope is going to give you. And that's how you use a Barsenoff mask. It's incredibly easy. There's nothing complicated about it. And like I say, with these refraction spikes, and you can you can just see them, you know, uh, coming in and out of, of alignment when you just touch your focuser. It's a great, it's such a, a simple but clever little thing, the Barsenoff mask. I do like them. And like I say, it's an, an essential item for anybody that's doing any kind of astrophotography, really. So there you have it, folks, the uh, Bartonoff Bass by SV Boney. And as you can see, they're a piece of cake to use, and it does make focusing a breeze, because it can be a problem, and I know a lot of you do have problem with the focus, and like I say, even I do sometimes. So just having something like this in your toolkit is really handy. Well, that's it for another video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. As always, uh, please like, share, comment. Maybe if I've forgot something that you think is important that I should have mentioned about uh, using one of these, feel free to leave it in the comment section.
As always, folks, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.